Now, here comes one of the most important theorems that we are going to learn in graph theory here, uh, which is uh, called Menger's theorem. So, at the end of this lecture, you will see that this theorem is equivalent to many uh, important theorems in combinatorics. Uh, in fact, at least seven of them we will, we will list today. Right? And each of the seven uh, theorems are basically equivalent to each other. Right? So, basically, if you prove one of them, from that, assuming that, you can prove the others easily. Right? That's the idea. Okay? So, they are kind of equivalent results. Uh, so, uh, and this is very important theorem, uh, this is called Menger's theorem of connectivity. Okay, so here is the, uh, here is the statement of the theorem. So, let u and v uh, be non-adjacent vertices in the graph. Then, the minimum number of vertices that separate u and v is equal to the maximum number of internally disjoint uv paths in the graph. So the theorem says that there is a close connection between the separating sets, right? Its cardinality and the internally vertex disjoint paths. Okay. So if you if you talk about UV paths, then the minimum number of vertices that can separate U and V, right? So you take U and V, look at all the paths, and find a subset of vertices which will disconnect u and v, right? So if you remove these vertices, then the uh, graph will be, I mean, you know, the u, there is no uv path in the remaining graph, then it's a, a separator, find the minimum cardinality separator, right? That minimum separating set is actually equal to the maximum number of internally disjoint uv paths in t, okay? And one direction you should be able to see very clearly, right? Because, uh, if every path is going to use the uh, separating set vertices, right? Then it can use at most, right? At most one, uh, I mean, you just use at least one vertex from the separating set to go from U to V. So you definitely cannot have more than, more than these many uh, disjoint paths, right? Internally disjoint paths. That is clear, right? Because every path contains one of these vertices and uh, you know, sir, therefore, each path have at least one. Uh, of course, you can have more, maybe, right? But uh, then you cannot have more than the minimum uh, separating set, that many uh, disjoint paths. So that is clear. But what is not immediately clear is that why there should always be uh, that many internally disjoint uh, UV paths. Okay? So this is uh, what we are going to uh, prove today. Okay. And, and the proof is uh, uh, also very interesting, so you should uh, you should pay attention to it. Okay, so there could be uh, there are there are several proofs. We are going to give a specific proof by induction on the number of edges. So let uh, let the you know let the graph uh, contain m edges. Okay, so G is the graph; it has m edges. And if m is equal to zero then uh, this is holds trivially, right? Because uh, there is no edge, so there is no UV paths. You are, we are non adjacent vertices, there is no UV paths. And uh, M is also zero, so there is no, you know, separating set is also empty set, right? The empty set separates because there is no paths. So therefore, uh, you know, the result is trivially true. So therefore, now we can assume, so this is the base case, so we can assume, uh, you know, the result holds, for graphs with size strictly less than m, where m is at least one. Right. Now, now let uh, let G be a, a you know a graph uh, of size m, right? Now, without loss of generality, we can assume u and v are to be in the same component. Why is this? Because if u and v are in different components, then there is no uv path. And you don't need any vertex to separate u and v because they are already separated, right? So that is empty set again. And therefore, uh, we can assume that u and v belong to the same component. So we assume that the graph has size m and uh, we have this graph and uh, u and v belong to the same component in the graph. Now, we can assume something further, right? If, uh, if you have 
uh, a minimum UV separating set uh, having, you know, let's say uh, K at least one vertices, right? Because, you know, zero is uh, already done, right? Then, uh, definitely G has at most K internally disjoint UV paths. As this is we mentioned before, right? Because every path must use at least one of the vertices. So it cannot have more than K IVD paths, right? So what remains to prove is uh, to show that we can actually find K such paths, right? Now, if K is equal to one, again, the result is immediate because if K is equal to one, what it says is that the graph has a cut vertex, right? I mean, there is a there is a cut vertex between U and V, right? U and V can be separated by a single vertex, means that there is a cut vertex that separates U and V. Now, if there is a cut vertex between U and V, then every path must go through that vertex, right? So, since every path must go through that vertex, you cannot have more than one uh, disjoint path. But because the you know U and V are connected there is at least one path. So therefore we get one path and that is the maximum that we can have, right? So therefore that also holds, right? So K is equal to one is also immediate. So without loss of generality, we assume that K is at least two, right? Because we have, we have done this. So we will assume that K is at least two for the remaining part of the proof. Okay, so we, we define, uh, you know, we divide the proof into three, three cases, okay? So the, you know, the definition of these cases are uh, very uh, interesting uh, because, you know, it makes the proof very, uh, very easy. Okay. So let us see how we define this uh, case. Okay. So the first assumption is that, right, you know, you have this uh, component in which you have, uh, you have U and V, U and V are connected, right. And you have a separating set, let us say, uh, X in the graph. Theory, okay. Now, the assumption is that for some separating set of the minimum cardinality, okay, so X is a minimum separating set for the uh, for U and V, uh, and for at least one of these uh, separating sets, right? So at least one of the separating sets, minimum separating set, has a property that there is a vertex, right, which is adjacent to U as well as V, okay? So the assumption is that there is some minimum separating set where a vertex in the set is adjacent to both U and V, okay? So there's an edge from U to X and also an edge from X to V. Okay, so if this happens in the graph, right, if, right, this is the first case, right? Suppose there is such a minimum separating set, in that case, what we do is the following, okay? So what we do is we remove the graph X from the graph G and you look at the graph G minus X, okay? So look at the graph G minus X. So in G minus X, of course, this edges, right? U to X and X to V will also uh, go, right? And then you get a smaller graph, right? With less number of edges. And in this graph, we can see that X minus the vertex X is a separating set for U and V, right? Because once you remove, you know, the entire set X, U and V are disconnected. I can do this in two steps, right? I first remove the vertex X and then remove the remaining vertices in X, right? So therefore, X minus singleton X is a minimum cardinality UV separating set in the graph G minus X, right? Because if there is a even a smaller one, I can remove that and remove X so that it gets separated. So therefore, we will assume that that is not the case. I mean, I mean therefore, it is not the case. So therefore, uh, X minus singleton X is a minimum cardinality UV separating set in the graph G minus X. But the point is that if uh, G minus X has at least two edges less, right? So I can use induction because the number of edges is less. And I am inducting on the size of the graph, which is the number of edges, right? So if the size of G minus X is strictly less than M, right? This implies that we can use induction hypothesis. So what is the induction hypothesis, right? If the 
if the number of headless is strictly less, then no, the result holds. That means that you can find k minus 1, right? So this was cardinality k, right? Then you can find k minus 1 internally, but as is joined uv pass from u to v in the graph g minus x. Okay? So in the graph g minus x, we can find internally vertices is joined uv paths from uh, u to v, right? There are k minus 1 such paths. So once you get this uh, many paths by induction, what you do is to just add the path u to x, x to v, right? Because u and uh, v are adjacent to x. So u, x, v is a path which was not present in the graph g minus x. So therefore, this path is going to be internally what is joined from all other paths, right? From the all other paths that we got obtained by the induction hypothesis. So adding this path, I get k minus 1 plus 1, there is k paths. So I get k paths in the graph, which solves the case for this case, right? So this case is okay, right? So if the uh, graph contains a separating set with the property that one vertex is adjacent to both u and v, then we can easily use induction, right? Okay, so that is the case one. Okay. So once we finish with this case one, we will assume uh, case two has the following structure, okay? So in this case, we assume that for every minimum uv separating set in the uh, in the graph G, okay, for every minimum uv separating set in the graph G, either every vertex in the set S, let's say the separating set S, is adjacent to u and not to v, okay, because if if there is one which is adjacent to both, uh, you know, u and v, then we are in the previous case, right? So we will assume that every minimum uv separating set has a property that, right, all its vertices are either adjacent to u, right, but none of the vertices are adjacent to v, or all the vertices are adjacent to v, and none of them are adjacent to u, right? So every separating set, minimum separating set has this property. Right. This is the second case, right? Maybe this doesn't happen, but we will assume that suppose this happens, if one of these cases happens. So, so what can we what can we see from this uh, structure, right? So if every uh, vertex in the separating set is adjacent to u, but none of them are adjacent to v, then you know, the UV path, of course, goes through the vertex at S, right? So every UV path goes to a vertex in S. Then from there, it has to take some path to V, right? But since there is no direct edge, there is at least one vertex in between when I go from S to V, right? So S to V, we should contain at least one vertex. So which means that, you know, the length of the shortest uv path, right, from u to v, let's say, right, must contain at least three edges, right, because u to s, I should need one edge, s to v, I need at least two edges, right. So the length of the shortest uv path, which is the distance between u and v, is at least three, right, because every path must go through s and then some, right, path of length two from s to v. So distance is at least 3. So we will observe that if the case 2 happens, then the distance between u and v is at least 3. Okay. Now what we are going to do is the following. Okay. So since you know, you know that there is a path of length at least 3, we will, we will take such a path, okay? such a shortest path. So we take a shortest uv path. Right, whatever is the shortest, it can be three, it can be four, whatever it is, but the shortest one that you can find in the graph from u to v, right? Whatever path that you can find. So consider p to be the shortest uv path, right? So it starts from u, go to some vertex x in the set S, right? The separating set, 
Then from x it goes to an immediate neighbor y, which is not the vertex v, of course, because there is no direct edge from x to v. And then from y, there is some path to v, right? It could be an edge or a, uh, you know, a longer path. So you have the shortest path, which goes from u to x, x to y, and y to v. Now, x, y is an edge because, you know, that is how we take the, uh, define the vertex y, right? So the edge e is equal to x, y. Now what we do is that, in this graph, I remove the edge e. I don't remove the vertices. I just remove the edge e, okay? So suppose you have something like this. So let me, let me draw it for you. Right? So you, you have u, then you have uh, some vertex, small x, let's say, in the set S. And then some y, and then some path to the vertex field, right? So you have this ux xy. So I am going to remove basically this edge xy. So the xy edge is removed in the graph. Of course, the other, other edges, whatever is there, are going to be present, right? Whatever it is, are going to be there. I just removed the edge xy. Now, once I remove the edge xy, what happens to the minimum uv separating set, right? See, I know that S is a minimum separating set, which means that removing the vertices of S will make the graph disconnected and that is the smallest set, right? Now, in this, if I remove one of the vertices, right? If, if S has k vertices and I remove the vertex x, of course, I know that the remaining set has k minus one cardinality, right? But if I remove x, of course, I also remove the edge uh, uh, x, y, right? Because x is a vertex incident to the edge x, y. Right? So therefore, removing the edge x, y, I mean, removing the vertex x will also remove x, y. So if I remove only the edge x, y, right? The, the number of, uh, you know, the minimum separating set uh, cannot decrease by more than one. That's what I wanted to say, right? Because, you know, just removing x, x itself will remove x, y. So in g minus x, y, the minimum cardinality u v separating set cannot be less than k minus 1, right? Because I can just remove x, which will remove, you uh, know, it's a subgraph of g minus x, y. And then that has uh, separating set size actually equal to k minus 1, right? Now, the claim is that, you know, of course, in, in in, in a typical case, once you remove an edge, it can also decrease the uh, decrease the, the cardinality of the separating set. But we are going to say that in this particular case, it will not decrease, right? The minimum separating set in G minus X, Y is actually, again, has cardinality equal to K. So we are going to prove this. But uh, I want you to think about why in G minus X, Y, you cannot have a separating set of size k minus one. Okay. So think and try to prove it yourself. Uh, if uh, we are in case two, that is every minimum UV separating set in S, I mean uh, set G, I mean, set S in G, has uh, either all the vertices in S are adjacent to U and not adjacent to V, or all the vertices are adjacent to V and not adjacent to U. In this particular case. If I remove this edge x, y, right, in the shortest uh, UV path, the edge x, y, then it cannot decrease the separating set, uh, cardinality of the separating set, okay? So think about this. So how do we prove this? Okay. Suppose, for the contrary, uh, suppose that there is a k minus 1 element separating set in the graph g minus, uh, uh, g minus uh, e, okay? So, we assume uh, that there is such a separating set in g minus e. So, we call uh, the set as, uh, let's say, z, which is equal to z1, z2, z3, etc., z k minus 1. Okay? So, we have a k minus 1 element separating set, we assume, in the graph g minus e. Now, what we know is that z uh, union x 
is a separating set, a UV separating set for the graph G, right? Because, right, uh, you know, once you remove X, you know, G minus, you get a subgraph of G minus XY. So if I remove all the elements of uh, uh, Z, uh, then you get a separating set in the graph uh, G, right? Because this is a separating set in G minus XY. And uh, G minus G minus X, right? For example, let me just write it, right? G minus X is a subgraph of uh, G minus the edge X, Y, right? Now, since Z is a separate UV separator for uh, G minus X, Y, it is also a separator for G minus X, right? Because it's a small subgraph. So, but now we know that the minimum cardinality of a separating set is k in the graph. So I have removed one vertex, which is x, right? And then I have removed uh, uh, one vertex x, and then I have removed uh, the k minus one vertices in z. So therefore, it's it has cardinality k. So therefore, it is a minimum uh, separating set also, right? So z union x is a minimum UV separating set in the graph G. But we know that by the definition of x, right, with the choice of x, x is adjacent to u, right, but not adjacent to v, right, because that was our assumption, right, x is basically adjacent to u, right, and of course, because of the property of s, it is definitely not adjacent to v. Now, x is adjacent to u and not v, uh, each of the z dies must also be adjacent to u, right, because because uh, Z union X is a minimum separating set, and we, we assume that in the case, every vertex in the separating set is either adjacent to U and not V, or adjacent to V and not U, but one of them is already adjacent to U, therefore everything else must be also adjacent to U, right? So therefore Z1 to ZK minus one is also adjacent to, uh, adjacent to U, right? But not adjacent to V. Now, this we can do because we assume that k is at least 2, right? Because k is at least 2, right? k is, you know, we, we assume that k is at least 2, right? Because when k is at least 2, we don't fall to the induction trap, right? We, we know that this set is uh, non-empty, right? This set, uh, z1 to set k minus 1 is, uh, is non-empty. Uh, and therefore, uh, therefore, we can do the following, okay? So, if I look at Z union Y, right, this Z union Y is also a UV separating set because once I remove Y, again I remove the edge XY. So G minus Y, right, as we just noted earlier, G minus X, similarly G minus Y, is also a subgraph of G minus XY. Now, because this is a subgraph of G minus XY, right, I, if I remove uh, Z1 to Z K minus 1, which is the separating set for G minus X, Y, then I get a uh, UV separator for the graph G also, right? So therefore, uh, we see that Z union Y is also a separating set for, uh, for, the, for the graph uh, G, right? Now, if Z union Y is a separating set, now, Z I, is are adjacent to u because y is adjacent to uh, no z i's are adjacent to u because we we proved it in the previous case we have not changed the z i's right and but but because of the property of the case y also must be adjacent to u right because uh, we said that every vertex in any minimum separating set is also adjacent to u so therefore there must be an edge from y to u also right <coughs> now this contradicts the fact that you know p was a shortest uh, uv path right because we said that we started with a shortest uv path which means that we go from u to x to y to v was of the shortest length but now if y is adjacent to u i can actually go from u to y and then continue this path which gives me even smaller path but by assumption this was the p was the shortest path right so this is a contradiction and therefore, we cannot have a separating set of size k minus 1 in this case. Right? So in g minus x, y, cannot have a separating set of size k minus 1. 
So, but G minus X Y has a separating set of size K only, right? So, every separating set in G minus X Y has cardinality K. But what we achieved by doing this is that we got a graph with smaller size, right? Because G minus X Y has strictly less number of edges. And therefore, we can assume induction, right? So, by induction hypothesis, this graph G minus X Y, right? G minus X Y has uh, K internally vector is joined, right? Paths from U to V, right? But all these paths are internally vector is joined paths in the graph G because you know X Y is an edge whether I can, you know, choose to put in the path or not, right? I can just throw it away, right? So all the paths in G minus X Y are also paths in G. Therefore, by induction I get. Uh, uh, K internally vertex is joined pass in the graph uh, G minus X Y and therefore in the graph G. So case one and case two are done, right? So then all it remains is our case three. And since we already assumed that, right? You know, case one and case two are not there, right? So, so we can assume that you cannot find uh, a separating set which is uh, having a vertex which is adjacent to u and v and you cannot find a separating set right i mean you know you don't have the property that every separating set has either uh, you know every vertex is adjacent to uh what adjacent to u or uh, adjacent to v right so that is not the case because these two cases are not there we will assume the following okay? so therefore we can find at least one Right, at least one minimum UV separating set, let us say W, such that no vertex of W is adjacent to both U and V. Right? right, that is the first case. Right, first case does not happen because in that case we will apply the first case. Right, and W has at least one vertex not adjacent to U. Right, because if every vertex of W is adjacent to U, then uh, again, uh, right. Uh, Right, so uh, it will fall into the first case if every every separating set has this property. But because you know, at least one separating set does not have that property, we can say that there is some uh, W where at least one vertex not adjacent to U, and at least one vertex which is not adjacent to V. Right, so which means that we are in a case like this. Right, so we have uh, U and V, U and V, and uh, W is a minimum UV separating set. And at least one vertex in W, right, is not adjacent to U, and at least one vertex in W is not adjacent to V. Right. Now, <clears throat> so we, we will we are in the third uh, case three, right? Now suppose suppose this is the case, right? So if suppose uh, if this is the case, let us let us uh, list our uh, uh, separating matrices. Let's say W one to W K. Now W1 to WK are our separating vertices, right? So these are the separating vertices. What I am going to do is the following, okay? So since W is separating set, every path from U to V must cross W, right? I cannot go from U to V without using some vertex of W. Right? So I am going to define a subgraph by starting from the vertex U, Traveling, you know, paths and going through the vertices of W, right? And the first time I hit a vertex in W in a path, I just stop and you know mark that path, right? Add that path. Then I look at another path, right? So I look at all the paths from U, which starts in U and ends in W, where I stop the path. The first time I cross W, I don't want to go, you know, further, right? After I reach W, I don't want to go any further. So every path it starts from U and reaches W for the first time, right? All such paths I take. So this forms a subgraph of the graph G, right? So all the U to W paths, right? U starting from U and ending in W, where I don't uh, repeat vertices of uh, W. I take this subgraph. And then I add a new vertex called V dash. 
what i do is that i make v dash adjacent to exactly all the vertices of w w1 to wk so v dash is adjacent to w1 to wk so i take this subgraph u to w paths right together with this new vertex that i am going to add that i call the graph gu okay gu is not a subgraph of graph but it is a graph obtained by adding v dash to the subgraph of uh, g right by the following similarly i look at all the paths starting from w's right w1 w2 etc and going to be right without repeating the vertices of w okay so all the paths starting from here and going to be right or i can just look at the paths from v2 w without repeating w words so collect all such wb paths and that subgraph together with the new vertex u dash okay u dash which is adjacent to all the vertices of w w1 to wk this defines the new graph gv so i have the graph gu and i have the graph gv now the interesting property of gu right is that the number of edges in gu is strictly less than the number of edges in g right because you know we assume that there is at least one vertex from some vertex you know the path from some vertex to v so therefore this right because this vertex you know this vertex is not adjacent to v you need to take at least two edges to go here right so if you know in this graph i have added exactly k edges from v dash to uh, w but here i have at least k plus 1 edges right because v to every w there is a connection and uh, at least one is not a direct edge so therefore i need at least k plus 1 so the number of edges in this graph is strictly less than the number of edges in this graph but of course w is a uv separating set right minimum uv separating set because we did not re remove anything in this part and to separate w i need to remove each of them because i can if i reach any of the vertices in w i can go to v dash so u v dash separator uh, w is a minimum separator for uh, gu right but now for a smaller graph right of cardinality strictly less than m right cardinality of gu is strictly less than m i can use induction right using induction i can find k internally vertices join u v dash paths in the graph gu similarly i can find k internally vertices join u dash v paths in the graph gv right so i have k u dash v paths which are internally u dash joint and i have k u v dash paths which are also internally u dash joint now it is just a matter of you know just you know observing right that uh, if there are such paths those paths must use precisely one vertex of w is because there are k such vertices right right in this in this graph right uh one vertex of w so these edges must be precisely the edges used to define this k path because there are only k edges here and each of them has to be used exactly once so therefore what we get is k ivd path right so there is a path from w1 so w1 to v right w2 to v right w uh k to v right so these paths are in gv right similarly i have a u to w1 paths right u to w k paths right because these paths must be going through u to w1 and to v dash u to w2 and v dash u to wk and v dash right u dash to w1 and v etc so but now this part is right these parts are all internally vertices joint similarly these paths are also internally vertices joint right so what i do is that i take the u to w1 paths and join with the w1 to v paths right so u to w1 path in the graph c and in this 
And from this part, I take the W into V bar, right? Now that cannot be, uh, you know, intersecting U to W two paths and W two to this path because, you know, because we we were very careful in selecting the, you know, subgraph from U to V that we don't repeat the vertices of W. So therefore, once I reach W, right, from here to here, there is no vertex or edge which is used on this part, right? So you know, the, the, these parts of the graphs are basically disjoint except for the vertices W, right? So I get internally with the join pass U2 uh, V through W1 through W2 through WK. So I have get, uh, I have, uh, you know, I have constructed K paths from U2 V in the graph, which are all internally vertices joint. So that is the uh, proof of case three. And therefore, we finish all the cases. Okay. So GU is the graph obtained by uh, looking at all the UW paths terminating at the first hit uh, of WI and adding a new vertex V dash adjacent to VA. That is the case uh, I am just describing inwards. Similarly, GV is obtained by all uh, WIV paths using at most one vertex uh, of WA and adding uh, U dash adjacent to each of the WIs, right? And uh, since uh, sizes of these graphs, GU and uh, GV, uh, there is no dash, I think, right? GU and GV are uh, strictly less than M, right? Yeah, strictly less than M. Uh, using induction hypothesis, we have uh, uh, K internally what is to join U, uh, U, V dash paths in GU and uh, K internally what is to join U dash V paths in GV. By the construction of this graph G U and G V, right? Each such path in G U is a U a W I path and a W I uh, V dash path. Uh, and uh, 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 W I V dash H, right? And similarly, in uh, G V, we have uh, this case. And combining these paths, you get uh, internally versus joint paths in the graph. So that is uh, Menger's theorem. So we have what we have proved is that uh, that uh, if u and v are non-adjacent vertices in the graph G, then the minimum number of uh, vertices that can separate u and v, right, is equal to the maximum number of internally disjoint uh, u to v paths in the graph G. Okay, this is a very very important theorem, uh, and uh, we will we will uh, we will use it now to. To prove uh, some uh, other results, okay? some other important theorems.